going? We've, it's been a while since we've spoken. Yeah, Megan, things have been busy. A lot of traveling, a lot of these AI talks. So it's uh, it's great. I'm I'm glad that's happening. But yeah, a lot of time on the road, which is part of my my way of being at the moment. So can't yeah, complain. yeah. It's uh, it's awesome uh, to see the world, but it's tiring as well. I mean, it's it's completely disruptive to a regular kind of schedule. It is, it is. I, actually, I, I remember I went from Bangkok to Dubai, to Greece, to Georgia, to Nepal, to Malaysia, Vietnam, and then India, and now I'm back in Bangkok. So it's like it's. <laughs> it's insane. I can't, I can't, I can't, sometimes I come and like, let me guess where I am today. Mm, let me, before I open my eyes today in the morning, <laughs> let me guess where I am. Oh, I'm wrong again. Oh, yes. Uh, my daughter's waking me up, so I must be at home for a change. <laughs> probably, probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, um, while uh, while you've been traveling, uh, the world of AI has uh, kept turning, and um, yeah, the the lines between human and machine generated content are becoming increasingly blurred. And uh, you know, tools like ChatGPT are becoming more integrated into our daily lives. Um, and as they do this, educators, content creators, and tech companies alike face the complex task of ensuring that these technologies are used uh, responsibly. So um, a major pain point for, for most is the difficulty in distinguishing AI-generated content from human work. Uh, and we've discussed this several times before on the podcast, um, but it's got specific significant implications for uh, something like academic integrity, copyright, and user trust. So to address this, OpenAI has developed a watermarking tool, and we've discussed watermarking tools as well. Um, but despite its high accuracy, I think it's got something like 99.9% .9 accuracy in detecting AI-generated content, the tool remains unreleased due to concerns about its broader impact. Um, and we'll get into all of those kind of broader impacts and, and what could be preventing the release. But uh, initially, to kick us off, what are your thoughts on this? Well, firstly, well done, OpenAI, who finally cracked this. <laughs> it's not easy, especially with text. It's not easy at all to detect plagiarism or AI being used, but with the, with the use of different techniques, perhaps punctuation, tools, and maybe a content style guide that they're using, they managed to kind of crack this. And as you mentioned, 99.9% accuracy in detecting AI content. It is important to know if the content is AI or not. Uh, it, it's useful. A lot of players in the market will be looking at this, especially people like Google or search engines to see if the content is, is AI or not. But equally, it's a comparative advantage discussion as well. Because if they start to release what's AI and what's not AI, and others don't release that, would they use and prefer the tools over OpenAI or ChatGPT? Mm -hmm. So it, it is a challenging, Question to answer, equally, at least they know how to do it now, which is which is a definite result. Yeah, yeah. Um, before we go on in, in terms of the implications and that kind of thing and the benefits and risks, maybe you could just give us a, a short uh, synopsis on how this tool actually works. So how do you watermark text? Um, so I, I would assume it's in the metadata, but uh, yeah, uh, please, um, please explain that. So it won't be easy. It won't. They won't reveal exactly how they did it. But from what I'm from what I understand, the placement of different characters in the text, as well as having a particular style or and tone, would allow them to detect if the content is AI or not. Again, they haven't disclosed what these are. I have noticed several times that the AI content especially from ChatGPT, has these very weird-looking punctuation marks, which are not normal. Uh, some hyphens, some dashes, which are not normal. The complete mix of what that might look like, they won't reveal, so I can't tell you for, for certain what, what that is. But I would imagine it's more text-based. Again, this is not the first thing that's happened many times when you're looking to find culprits in a company who leak content. You give each person a different version 
of the text. And then they test it to see which person leaked the content in a company. So th this is not new. It does happen before as well, but they use it at, at a grand scale in content generation. I, I believe mm -hmm. this is the first time we've gone to 99.9% .9 accuracy in detecting AI content. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. Um, and there's obviously, uh, if this does get released, or even if it doesn't, because leaks happen, um, there's, there's a concern that people might find ways to bypass the watermark used to detect AI-generated content. How likely do you think that this is, and what could be done to prevent it? Absolutely. The first thing that should happen is, if they do release this tool to detect AI, is you'll, you'll see a set of companies going out there, releasing their crack, their, their crack code to kind of go around these watermarks. And it would be really easy. It's all text-based. It's a bit harder for images because in image, you have metadata in the images, in the videos, so you can detect if the image is done or created by a different tool. But when it comes to text, it is you know, just bringing off characters. And you can change them around to make them a particular way and make that almost untraceable for the tool which OpenAI created. So, but given that how easy it is to fix this this issue if you were to find out the code which they use to create these watermarks, it almost makes no sense from a competitive perspective for them to release this because people will come up with, with uh, a way to get around it and then mm -hmm. it defeats the purpose. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, another, we, if we're speaking about the business benefits and uh, maybe not such a benefit, uh, it, it's, it's a big downfall. Um, some users have said that they might use ChatGPT less if this mark, uh, watermarking feature is added, especially if AI tools, uh, other AI tools are not doing the same. So um, how, how this would obviously impact OpenAI's business potentially negatively. Um, how could this affect the way AI tools are used overall? And do you think that the, the industry should kind of set common rules for this? Yes, there might be conventions from the future on how they generate AI text, but I also feel it'd be very difficult to agree on one watermarking technique. For example, if you look at a analogy of antiviruses, each antivirus has their own way of releasing their code or their fixes, and they have to constantly upgrade and update it to keep to stay relevant. And again, it becomes a comparative advantage for each company as well to not give away their secrets. Mm. In a similar way, I feel that AI text will become there will be tools created internally by almost every big player like Anthropic, like Gemini, but they will refrain from launching that to the public because that makes it very easy for someone to manipulate the information and create a fix for these. And that this, and the tool doesn't work as well. Yeah. Now, what's the point of launch, uh, you know, developing the tool if you're not going to launch it? Um, if it's not going to be uh, launched uh, to the public, is it going to maybe be launched uh, to a, a more private uh, audience, uh, detecting stuff within the companies themselves? Yes, great question. I've been thinking about it quite a bit since this news came out. And I think one big thing we're going to be seeing in the coming days, weeks, months is the dominance of search GPT-like tools. These are tools which are for search, like Google does at the moment. As we are entering in, into an era where we're doing all the searches with an AI tools itself, the search engines are going to change as well. We're going to start to rely on that GPT perplexity for searches. Now, to have that tool to detect AI content, especially open AI content by open AI, it can then rank these websites differently, knowing which content is generated by AI and which one is actually not AI at all. I feel that is going to be a, a massive superpower for OpenAI to be able to find which content is created by AI, because that content mm. needs to be 
less powerful than human generated content. So they will mm. be able to give internet ranking. Overall, having the knowledge of which is AI, which is not AI, will help these companies, but these tools are going to be remain internal so that they can have a competitive advantage over other companies who don't know if that content generated was AI or not. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's all coming back to what we've discussed so many times on the podcast already is, uh, you know, prioritizing human generated content over AI generated content um, and, you know, making sure that that content is still um, or should I say that AI is being used as a tool uh, to enhance creativity, not just simply create you know, copious amounts of content that get shoved out online. Would something like that help with kind of model decay? Because uh, that seems to have been popping up in the news quite a lot lately as well, that, uh, you know, uh, AI is being trained by AI-generated content. And so the, the content that the new AIs are creating is, is actually substandard. There's an element of, element of that synthetic data, which is being used to train these new versions of LLMs Recently, Facebook, when they launched the Meta, when they launched their Llama recent version with a higher parameter count, they did mention that a lot of the data they traded on was synthetic. There is still a lot of value in human generated content. There's still a lot of value in doing that because that's going to rank better and going to train the AI better as well. But many a times you can't do that. And that's, that's an issue. So if you can, and I'm sure every LLM prefers human edited content, human created content. But if they can't, then they have to use the second best thing, which is synthetic data. But yeah, if, yeah, if we constantly keep using synthetic data for training, then there will be a decay in the the power of these LLM tools. It won't be better. Perhaps it'll be worse off than the previous versions. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's probably a good place for us to leave it today. Um, so, yeah, uh, as AI continues to shape the way we work uh, and create, uh, the conversation around responsible use becomes ever more critical. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you think tools like OpenAI's watermarking feature should be widely adopted or do the potential risks outweigh the benefits? Uh, please share your opinion with us on social or in the comments. And of course, as always, if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to follow or subscribe uh, to the Goodman podcast so you never miss out on our latest discussions. Uh, until next time. Thanks, Raj. Thank you, Megan.